your chairmanship, and I welcome the opportunity to contribute to the debate as we continue to fight against childhood cancer. I am aware that the petition, which is the subject of today's debate, is primarily written with reference to the NHS in England. As a Scottish MP, members will forgive me for using the debate as a chance to highlight some of the, the local champions in my constituency who have done so much to help raise awareness of childhood cancer. Whether we are in Scotland or England, and regardless of our party affiliation, I hope that all members can come together to provide constructive suggestions for the UK Government to take forward. I hope too that the Minister is receptive to those suggestions in the spirit in which they are given. We know that childhood cancer is relatively rare, yet in Scotland there are still around 150 children diagnosed with cancer every year. Will my Honourable Friend give way? <coughs> Certainly. Sure. Um, Stuart Thank Donnerable, Lawrence. friend, for, for giving way. And, uh, my constituent, um, Sam Dorrance, was five years old when he lost his battle with cancer earlier this year. Will, will my honourable friend uh, join me in congratulating Sam's brother, Ethan, who's raised £10,000 uh, for Click Sergeant, and to Sam's family and friends who have raised over £65,000 uh, for Super Sam's Fund to, to fund treatment into high-grade brain tumour research. Bonnie Cowan. Here, here. Absolutely. I had the privilege of meeting the family. We were here for the, the British Red Cross uh, event a couple of weeks ago here in Parliament. An absolute inspiration and example to us all. Um, the 150 individual cases that I mentioned means 150 new families that are having to deal with the devastating consequences of illness every year. It's not only the health aspect of, of cancer which families must overcome, it's also the immense emotional and financial turmoil that the diagnosis can bring. Many parents will face extreme pressure in their relationship, in some instances leading to a breakdown of the family unit. Others will be forced to give up work, and combined with additional costs of caring for a seriously ill child, it may mean that the family is pushed into poverty. And at this point, I'd like to, to bring that to attention to the Minister. In their response to the e-petition, the government are saying children and teenagers with serious or critical illness, such as cancer, are also entitled to apply for disability living allowance or personal independent payment. I'm just wondering if there's some way we could adjust the process that a diagnosis should become a tick in a box so those people don't have to apply through PIP or DLA. It's a given. They need the financial support, and we know that, and take one of those burdens off them. And along with the, 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 the child and the parents, their siblings too will experience disruption in their own lives, including educational difficulties. So while we were able to quantify there are 150 new cases in Scotland every year, we can never quantify the wide-ranging implications of the illness. It's encouraging that survival rates are improving. However, I'm not sure, I, I, am, sorry, I am sure, we can all be in agreement there's always more that can be done. In Scotland, I'm pleased that the Scottish Government is absolutely committed to providing the best possible care for children and young people in life -threatening, with, with life-threatening illnesses. I trust the different NHS bodies north and south of the border have a mechanism whereby they can share best practice as it relates to childhood cancer. And perhaps the Minister can outline if this is indeed the case. And let's not stop north and south of the border. Pan-European cooperation, in fact global cooperation, it would be appalling to think that there's good substantial research within anywhere in the world which wasn't been equally shared with everybody that can benefit from it. So in my own constituency of Unclyde, we also have our champion, a champion who's helping to raise the awareness of childhood cancer, Nathan Mowat. Nathan was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukaemia shortly before his fourth birthday. <coughs> Since then, he's endured hours of chemotherapy treatment, and he will need at least a further year of maintenance treatment. Chemotherapy can have a harsh effect on the human body. In Nathan's case, it means that even a minor illness can have serious ramifications for his health. Nathan, with the support of his mum, Gillian, his dad, Paul, and his sister, Annabelle, have managed to rally a huge amount of support within Inverclyde. In September, the Greenock Telegraph, the Greenock Morton Football Club, a range of prominent local businesses and organisations pledged to Glow Gold and helped Nathan raise awareness of childhood cancer. Glow Gold was a great success, not only because it rallied community support, because it also made more people aware of the practical issues that people face as a result of childhood cancer. Whether it's issues of bereavement, research, diagnosis or resources, we need to have an open discussion about how we can continue to improve our approach. And finally, Mr Davis, I'd like to thank Nathan for all his great work in Inverclyde, and I look forward to seeing him fully overcome his illness. 
You will continue to inspire many people, and I am sure my parliamentary colleagues will join with me in wishing him and his family the very best for his future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.